So this is our second on point. It's about Divyastra, the Prime Minister's tweet, and a technological breakthrough for Indians, for Bharat. PM, in a post praise the Defence Research and Development Organisation, scientists for mission Divyastra. And look at the word. We use words like Brahmastra, Nagastra. They are part of our tradition. It is, and the word is also about decolonizing the names of the weapon. Right, it's, it's about decolonization. So everything has a meaning. So I will not waste time because the expert is with me, Sandeep Punithan. Sandeep, just take us through the Divyastra. Well, uh, Karthika, this is actually an Agni-5 missile, which is the backbone of our strategic deterrent when it comes to China. The Agni, as you know, was first test fired in 2012. And uh, that does all the heavy lifting in India's nuclear arsenal, which is that it is a missile that's capable of covering all of China from wherever it's launched. And the uh, additional advantage of this missile is that earlier va variants of the Agni, like the Agni 3, had to be launched from closer to the border, like in the Northeast, for instance. Now, there was a, a possibility that the Northeast could be overrun or could come under a lot of attack. Agni 5 ends our strategic dilemma by allowing the missile to be fired deeper in the from deeper inside the Indian hinterland further south it's road mobile the earlier Agni 3 was a rail mobile missile but the Agni 5 is actually a road mobile missile it can it's carried on a cross country vehicle that can be hidden very easily and now with the MERV test that we just the prime minister just announced it allows one Agni missile to carry multiple warheads which means more bang for the buck. For the launch of one missile, you can launch up to 10 nuclear weapons from that one missile. Now that helps you in multiple ways. It uh, overwhelms the enemy's ballistic missile defenses because while ballistic missile interceptors have just one warhead, you have a ballistic missile, an attacker with multiple warheads, each hitting targets spread over several hundreds of kilometers from one missile. Okay, I'm also joined by uh, General Ashwini Sivaj. Sir, your opening comments? I think quite a feat. Uh, yes, Kartika is a game changer. It's a force multiplier. It is a matter of pride today that we have now tested Agni 5. Because, see, it uh, very rightly brought out that uh, it is quite peculiar to whatever we have made that Agni series. One is that Agni 5, that its range is about 5,000 kilometers, can cover the complete uh, China. Second thing is that it is a multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle. What it means is that from one uh, missile, you can have a multiple uh, warhead and it can strike deep inside China with multiple warhead, which can carry a nuclear weapon. So this, what we have a uh, assured minimum deterrence, that credible minimum deterrence it carries. We have no first use policy of a nuclear weapon. So it means in case we have been targeted with a nuclear weapon, we must have a capability of striking back to in the enemy, an enemy deep inside. Now this fits the bill as far as Agni-5 concern. One, it range is 5,000 kilometers. Second thing is that it can give a multiple target. Third thing is very difficult to detect. Fourth, it is indigenously built. Fifth, it is now a th third stage, three stage of solid fuel, which is available within India itself. So I suppose this is a game changer of force multiplier. We have now come to that um, uh, basically a gang of those countries which have this capability of multiple independent target re-entry vehicle, which can hit the multiple target with one missile. And this is going to make a difference in the world today, okay. Kartike. Okay. Uh, Sandeep, you know, uh, we, we are talking about a technology which the Americans and the Russians mastered in the late 80s, you know, uh, minute pin missiles and yes. all that. You know, today we are talking about the cruise missile, hypersonic missiles, yes. you know, we really don't need to break into uh, multiple uh, target entries. Right. Russians have uh, Samrat uh, yeah. and many other missiles, but then, you know, in you know, IRBMs have changed the game, you know, hypersonic IRBMs. Yes. So how, how do we deal with it, with these missiles and hypersonic missiles? Well, Karthika, hypersonic missiles, which we are also developing uh, incidentally, 
is at the very high end of technology. It's still being developed. There are no countries that have actually successfully developed hypersonic missiles to their full capabilities. A hypersonic missile is something that's well over Mark 5, starts at Mark 5, it goes up to Mark 25. The Russians claim to have deployed their first hypersonic uh, missiles, but that is still emerging technology. MIRVs have been around for a couple of decades, like you mentioned. They've been deployed from the 70s and the 80s. So it's fairly mature, the technology. But even so, it's a technology that's been held very closely by the five members of the P5 countries, the, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. And India is one of the first countries to actually deploy, develop and deploy this technology, as the Prime Minister just mentioned. It's very significant because the kind of technologies that are involved in maneuvering this, the bus of the missile in, uh, in the uh, exo-atmosphere to you know, ensure that it's in the correct trajectory and then finally aims all of these warheads onto you know, individual targets, a very significant technological breakthrough. And I think that's what India has been working on. This technology has been quietly uh, being developed over the last couple of years. It's only now that we have chosen Is to make that announcement. Is it nuke-based? It's entirely nuclear-based. There is, MIRVs are nothing but uh, nuclear weapons that one Agni-5 missile will carry up to 10 nuclear warheads. It's also possible that instead of 10 warheads, they could carry a mix of warheads and decoys, dummy warheads, to confound, further confound enemy ballistic missile defenses. But the fact is that it is primarily a nuclear deterrent. And as General Sivach mentioned, it's in keeping with our no first use policy. There is no way India will first launch a nuclear weapon. It is only to deter any other adversary from launching a missile attack on us. Okay, let me try out a bite. I, as an Indian, feel very proud that uh, we have uh, we have come to a stage where now not we are not beating about the bush, and our message is very clear: leave us alone, don't trouble us. Okay, if you trouble us, the trouble will find you, and you'll not be able to handle it. That is the message. General Sivaj, you know, the proof of the pudding is in eating it. I think, you know, uh, the real, the real, I would say, uh, uh, tech uh, demonstration is when we will be able to marry this technology with submarine launched missile. You know, that, that's the pure deterrence. Don't you think so? Because land-based missiles are vulnerable. But if you marry this technology with a submarine-based uh, system, then that's pure deterrence. How far or how close we are to that? Uh, yeah, very kind. They, they can, uh, very rightly brought out, uh, there are two factors. One is that we must have a triad, what very rightly brought out initially also. We have a triad that we can fire our nuclear weapons from uh, ground, by air, on the sea, as well as on summary. That had made our uh, um, basically a credible minimum deterrence much more uh, viable because we have a capability in the sense in case your adversary fire a nuclear weapon, it should not happen. Your system get paralyzed. Your decision making getting paralyzed and you don't have a second strike capability. So no point having a no first use if you do not have a second strike capability, which is a very, very, uh, you can say 100% sure. Now with this, two things have happened. Once we have brought this uh, uh, Diva Sastra, uh, this Agni 5, it has got a multiple targets uh, warhead. In, in the sense, in case the air defense system of the enemy will try to target one of them, three of them, five of them, may not able to target all the warhead. That is a point number one which must understand. Though it is not hypersonic, I, I just say, though it is not hypersonic, like Kinjal of Russian, but the point there, it is it is still easy to, uh, of course, that is stealth technology, you can't find out. But in this, you are trying to uh, sort of make the enemy uh, basically get confused Formidable by multiple word. targets. Formidable is the that word. Is a, that, that's yes. the main. Second thing is, very rightly brought out that it is, as on today, mobile on land. It is a land-based. It has to be submarine base in time to come. Sir. I don't think that should be a problem because the next step will be that we will able to fire from submarine also because then it may, makes it more okay. potent. It Just is falling short difficult of, to detect. General, I'm falling short of time. Uh, you know, I have got group captain, VN Jha, senior scientist, uh, and joint director, TRDO, retired, sir. 
your thoughts on this technological feature sir thank you very much for coming i thought i was not visible uh, okay fine look this is a technology which is uh, a very very robust one and when we are talking of the agni 5 uh mirv specially has got a, a very varied capability uh, see what happens ballistic missile all the ballistic missile they have a parabola of light that they they go up and then they come down to the target uh, agni 5 goes much beyond the atmosphere and that is how uh you know what happens if this is the earth and we have we have uh, uh, you know launched a missile missile goes up and in between the earth is also moving you know uh, uh, one rotation in 24 hours so earth is moving um, there underneath so every target which you want to hit has to be updated on to the uh, targeting system and uh, the, all the parameters are acquired in accordance with that and that there comes the use of very versatile mirv mirv can have a separation beyond the atmosphere or it can come down through the reentry you know the, most of the atmospheric uh, reentry that around uh, uh, 45 kilometers range uh, above, above the surface so it can make the reentry depending on to the technology depending on to the system that the, the 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 payload has got if the payload has got the carbon uh, you know uh, protective layer it can make through the reentry at any level then MIRV can separate out all those warheads much above the reentry and then go independently head on to independently on the target that is one and secondly uh, when we are talking of the MIRV as you know our panelists have told you that uh, by and large up to about uh, you know, 10 odd payload can be mounted in one go but that limits the total capacity of the payload whatever once you have the MIRV each MIRV now heads on to the target fed on to it and keeps on updating the data every millisecond of its acquisition so it's a very complex technology and as this particular system when it comes down after the reentry the the velocity of these missiles are almost to the uh, uh, hypersonic range some even acquire as much as 25 a uh, mac of the velocity while heading on to the you say uh, 25 mac did you say 25 mac 25 mac it can get as much as 25 mac after it, you know it starts dropping uh, and then with the drop you know you, you can calculate the velocity with the acceleration gravitational acceleration that it pulls it towards so. so that sort of velocity it can have but usually it is in the hypersonic range of about 5.5 to 7.5 that is the uh, range in which it hits the target it is very difficult to uh, you know defend your land that's what uh, the bite you had shown once you fire this missile this is mostly uh, you know uh, the nuclear missile only you don't uh, fire few hundreds or few thousands of the kilogram of uh, explosive to enemy in this strategic defense so once you have fired this uh, uh, nuclear capable missile you have to be very sure that yes you want to hit the target you want to neutralize the okay. enemy in that area and mostly it is strategic missile it it makes a hell of a lot of damage it is not a tactical missile so when at that velocity of 5.5 to 7.5 mark it comes it is very very difficult to intercept okay. and it is you know the target is usually destroyed thank you so much thank you so much for you know in 5 minutes sir, you really encapsulated the every detail of it you know i really love the way you described it uh, showed it on the globe thank thank you Th uh, thank you sir thank you sandeep thank you janal sivach